Support for Living Culture is provided in part by Fitz Seafoods, Airly Winery, and by Work Unlimited. My name is Scott Yandel, and uh, my family, which uh, consists of Marilyn, my wife, and our youngest son, Andrew, who's almost 19, uh, own and operate Abundant Life Farm. We have about 210 acres that we own, and then we lease another 25 acres of pasture land. And uh, we have a diverse farm. We raise a lot of different types of animals. We raise cattle, we raise pigs, we raise lamb, chickens for meat, chickens for eggs. Uh, we raise a few ducks in the winter time, and we've been out here since um, 2000. Before we moved here, we lived in Silicon Valley. My husband was a software engineer. I was uh, working in a cubicle. I was kind of uh, ready for a change. I know I would look out the window at work and say, boy, I'd love to be outside, especially on a nice uh, summer day. And we were, he was getting kind of fed up with work and I was a stay-at-home mom, homeschooled the kids. And we were looking for something to do different so that we could involve the family. Then I read an article about Joel, or by Joel Salatin. And then I ended up getting his book, You Can Farm. And Scott read it and I thought, gee, this sounds like something we could do. So we read a couple more of his books and then we, um, wrote to him, contacted him, and, and asked if he knew anybody out here that farmed like he did, and he didn't. So then we said, well, what if we come out there? Can we work with you? So he said that would be fine. So we put all of our stuff in storage. We raced, leased out our house. We spent uh, about six months, a little over six months, back in Virginia working with Joel. Decided we could farm. <laughs> So then after we came back, we started property hunting. And at that time, prices in California were horrible. And we'd been up in Washington State when my husband was in the Air Force. And so we knew we liked, you know, the Northwest as well. And prices were a little cheaper up here. So anyway, we found this farm and sold our place in California and moved up here and started farming. lost her mother and so my wife hand fed her and so she's kind of bonded on Marilyn and so she thinks I guess Marilyn is her mother so wherever Marilyn goes that's where she goes which is kind of nice because Marilyn will get Blossom to follow her and then all the other lambs tend to follow her too so that kind of works out nice. try to um, mimic what nature um, dictates, I guess, for the animals and the way they're raised. So we allow our chickens to be out in the open, in the grass, so they can scratch for bugs and, and worms and things like that. So we move the cattle every day, we move the sheep every day. The pigs get to be in the woods where they can, you know, root up with their noses and run around. And so then we'll move them after they've kind of torn up an area. And I pretty much uh, move them every day, although when they're young like this, I can usually, oh, move them every two days. But uh, in another, probably starting today, I'll start moving them every day so they're always on uh, fresh grass and uh, it's nice to keep them on fresh grass. It just uh, is more healthy for them, and uh, they can eat. Uh, they eat a fair amount of uh, fresh grass. They probably consume oh, 10, 15 percent of their diet through the grass. So it's 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 fairly significant. Yeah. 
Well, this time of the year is kind of a fun time of the year because this is when our babies are born. Well, spring is lambing time and calving time. So we, fin we just finished up with the lambing and now we're almost done with calving. We purposely plant it so that they're calving uh, and lambing this time of the year when the weather is nice. We pretty much are involved year round with the cattle and sheep. That doesn't change too much from one season to another during the winter. They're in the barn for the wettest part of the season, and so that changes the routine a little bit, but it doesn't really change probably the amount of time that we spend with them. Uh, we're able to keep the sheep out year-round. Uh, they're light enough that even in wet fields, they do okay. Uh, we only raise our poultry during the, the spring, summer, and early fall, so now we're just getting the, the first uh, batch of uh, broiler chickens out in the field. They've been out for about uh, three weeks now and we've got some in the brooder house that'll be coming out tomorrow and then a week later. After being uh, cooped up in the house a lot during the winter with the wet cold rainy weather it's always nice to get out here in the sunshine and the, the warm weather and so we look forward to that. Well, I've always liked animals. I, at one time, I wanted to be a vet. And uh, I enjoy, I just love being outdoors. So I just thank God every day that I get to be out here and enjoying his creation. And I really, this is my favorite time of the year because I love watching the calves and the sheep being born. It's just so miraculous. And those calves, they get, even the first time moms, they know to let their calf nurse and the calves just get up and they know where to go. It's just so incredible to me. So I really enjoy that, and it's just so peaceful and nice out here. And we enjoy it. It's it's something that uh, we look forward to each day. Uh, there's always something new. Uh, life life never gets dull here. There's always something <laughs> different that comes up, something we haven't experienced before, which kind of makes life a challenge. Plus, we get to in, we eat like kings. We enjoy wonderful, good food because the we don't give any. Um, antibiotics or hormones or anything to our animals. We don't even vaccinate them. And they're all doing, you know, marvelously on the, on the grass that God made. So it's just fun to be able to be part of it. And so we enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> 